We are called feminazis by men and women. We are derided for wanting to control our reproductive rights, for wanting equal pay, equal treatment, equal, equal. Women make up 51% of the U.S. population, yet we have never needed an organization like the Feminist Majority Foundation more, an organization that has been fighting for the rights of women for more than 25 years. In 2002, the Feminist Majority Foundation was nominated for a Nobel Peace Prize. I am very pleased to have joining me today Galen Burroughs, Policy Director for the Feminist Majority Foundation. How are you doing today? I'm doing well. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. This is an organization that uh, has, has been around for a long time uh, with the struggle. When I think of Ms. Magazine, yeah. I should think of the Feminist Majority Foundation. Uh, Ms. Smell, is it? Smeal. Smeal, mm -hmm. uh, who used to run NOW, uh, the National Organization for Women, um, was uh, our girl, uh, Ms. Magazine. Mm -hmm. Was she? Gloria Steinem. Yeah, well, Gloria was a part of the organization as well. Gloria and um, Ellie Smeal go back to they the beginning. They go back to way the back <laughs> to the beginning. They were marching. That's right. Define in your estimation mm -hmm. feminism today. What, is, what does feminism mean to you? Well, feminism just simply is the equality between the sexes, equality for men and women, but now it's broadened, right? So because we're, we're not about binaries anymore, right? So it's equality for everyone. It's really about egalitarianism. So why do some people make feminism such a dirty word? And you know, you can, you can try to lay that at the feet of men if you want to, but there are so many women out there who mm -hmm. are so proud to say, well, I'm not a feminist. And when I hear that, I don't know what component or what specific portion of being a feminist mm -hmm. is an affront to them. In some ways, it's a sign that, that we're, we're popular, right? We're doing, we're doing the right thing. If people can say, I don't need feminism, but still go to work every day and still you know, be able to go to school and things like that, I think that that shows that we, in some ways, have succeeded. Well, we have, but the other they're, they're inuring the benefit of yes. the hard work without understanding you got here because of all the hard work that was done here. Right, and I agree with that. <laughs> I do think, though, that um, feminism, unfortunately, has been alienating for some people, and I think that they don't see themselves within feminism. So talk about that. What has, what has been alienating about being a feminist? Well, I think that, um, personally, I don't feel alienated as a feminist, <laughs> and I think that feminism is for everybody, mm -hmm. and that this movement has incorporated the struggles of lots of people, LGBT people, mm -hmm. um, African Americans, Latinas, workers, undocumented. I mean, we're all together doing this fight, but I think that sometimes the media doesn't portray it that way, or, you know, people don't people don't want to see themselves as um, victims or oppressed and things like that. So I think that it, there has been some alienation, uh, but I do think that as a general rule, the movement has been very inclusive. No one owns feminism. Feminism is there for everyone and everyone experiences it a little bit differently. Um, but I do think that media portrayal of feminism has been an issue. Yeah, and, and let's make it clear mm -hmm. that men can be feminists as well, because I have always said that when it came to me, I'm just speaking to me, my father was a feminist. Oh, yeah. Um, my, his father, in my estimation, was a feminist as well. And I have um, a feminist husband. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. That's right. So this is... This is not something, uh, being a feminist does not mean we are excluding men from our narrative, from our dialogue, quite the contrary. Men are very much so a part mm -hmm. of, of, of us and what we want. We want parity. We mm -hmm. want equal treatment. It's like I said to a, a man who was hiring me once, I said, listen, you may pay me less than a man, but I'm on the record mm -hmm. in front of a whole bunch of people saying, you better not pay me less than a man. That's you know, right. if that's all I can do, at least I raise the issue. Right. But we're looking for parity. That's we it. are. And uh, there, you're right. Many men are feminists. In fact, we have, we have men. Um, we, Feminist Majority Foundation runs a uh, program called Girls Learn International. It's a program for high school girls. And we bring a, a delegation of girls to the UN Commission on the Status of Women and many of the girls brought their dads oh. and their dads were there and they introduced themselves as feminist dads. I mean men have sisters, wives, That's friends, right. daughters and they want equality for them too. You know they they see their struggles and they're equal partners in you know in the fight for for equality. And, and I think I often have said this and I talk to men about this that you know just to get their opinion 
when the whole feminist movement maybe started, I think men just didn't know where they fit in. Mm -hmm. And so when a man opens a door for me, you know, I beam and say, thank you very much. You're the last gentleman on the face of this earth. And sometimes men will say to me, well, I didn't know if you'd be offended. Absolutely not offended at all. <laughs> Open that door, sir. But I think a lot of men don't know where they fit within mm -hmm. A certain, uh, I think, confines of the, the feminist narrative. Mm -hmm. uh, and hopefully that is changing. I think that is changing, and I think that men understand their role as being supportive, but also I think that men are starting to understand that feminism has benefits for them. That's right. They can be more active participants in their home lives. I mean, the family is changing so much. There are more men that want to stay at home with their kids. They want to take time off when they have new babies. So I think that men are starting to realize that, hey, if my wife gets paid equal to what a man gets paid, she's not paid 77 cents on a dollar. That's that right. benefits our whole family. That's right. That benefits me. So I do think that there is more support as it becomes more apparent that feminism benefits everybody. And the feminist movement is not just one thing. It's not just about our reproductive rights. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's a big part of it, she says to the camera. <laughs> <laughs> But, you know, it's about, again, mm -hmm. equal treatment, um, making sure that workplace laws are in place and that we can utilize those laws, whether it's sexual harassment, discrimination, employment discrimination, racial mm -hmm. discrimination, just making sure that that's in place. Oh, absolutely. I think that the women's economic agenda is, one, extraordinarily popular because people see how it affects their pocketbooks. It's very concrete. Um, but it's imperative for women's equality. I mean, you have to make equal salaries, you know, we need equal wages. It's 77 cents on the dollar for women on average. African American women make less, Latinas make even less. Mm -hmm. um, raising the minimum wage is so important mm -hmm. for women because most, um, most minimum wage workers are women. Um, Part-time workers right. and things like that. Having flexible uh, work spaces is, I think, important. Having paid sick leave, um, a lot of workers, women workers, don't have one paid sick day their kid gets sick, they get sick. Um, it's a, it's a, a big deal. I mean, Absolutely. that can change their whole, their whole month. They might not have enough money. They might get fired. They, you know. So these, these economic issues are sort of the lifeblood for families generally, for women in particular, but for families. Um, women are, are the primary breadwinners now, and 40 percent of, of families with children under 18. I mean, it really does affect everyone. And the economic portion that you just talked about, would you identify that as probably the number one concern with respect to women's issues right now? Because we've had a lot of court rulings that <laughs> made us go, what? Excuse me? Reproductive? <laughs> who? Wait a minute. Right. It's hard to say what is number one because I think that they're all related and they're all equally important. So, you know, the Hobby Lobby decision yes, that, is yes. huge. And that has economic um, consequences, right. Mm -hmm. right? Because mm -hmm. birth control is expensive, especially if you're a minimum wage worker. That's right. Um, but also the buffer zone uh, case, McCollum v. Coakley, that came out, that is also, um, it has implications for mm -hmm. women's safety in terms of their ability to access reproductive health care. All of those things mm -hmm. have economic consequences. Yes. Yes. Um, but they're all equally important. So. I, I, I can't pick and choose uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> the number one, but they're all related. Galen Burroughs with the Feminist uh, Majority Foundation, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. And thank you for being a feminist. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be right back.